So what we're going to do right now is uh, we're going to kick things off by talking to the three brains behind this wonderful operation. So uh, I hope you'll give a big round of applause to Rachel Burns, Christina Kern, and Christy Thompson, everybody. Bring them up. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Hi, ladies. Hi. Uh, thanks for having me. That's a weird thing for me to say because I just introduced you, but thanks for having me to do this. Um, so I just want to ask, just kind of off the bat, what was the motivation, what was the impetus for doing this wonderful day? Yeah. Way to start with an easy question. It's, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not Anderson Cooper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll kick it off, but um, Campfire & Co. and um, the Content Ch Chop Shop, which is a company that um, Rachel owns. We've uh, been collaborators for a few years and um, realized that a lot of our clients were asking us some of the same questions and we really wanted a lot of our clients to meet each other and hire each other and work together. Um, and after doing a couple workshops here in Richmond and in Norfolk, we realized that it would be really awesome to kind of do all of that in one day instead of maybe pulling it out over multiple events, multiple weeks. We thought like, hey, let's just do it all in one day. That'll be way easier. It's very efficient of you, yes. <laughs> yeah, and we, we felt like there wasn't a lot going on in Richmond um, for the small business community that we felt like was really geared towards us specifically as a company that's about five to six years in. Um, we have a lot of sort of questions about growth and how do we become either a bigger or sort of older business, a smarter, more efficient company. Um, and we wanted to create a place where other folks like us could meet each other and also learn some of the things that we wanted to learn. So it was really selfish, actually. We just wanted to learn from you guys. <laughs> so we created this whole event so that we could go to your workshops. That's, uh, that's, yeah, that's pretty much the that's reason. That's yeah, yeah. incredibly selfish. No, there's, there's, so you said, uh, so Christy, you and Christina are colleagues. Mm -hmm. And Rachel, you work in the same space. It's a really cool space, by the way, if you oh, no, have nothing. Have you're, you're in Hampton Rose. Well, I thought, okay, okay. I have worked out of the Wood Lot, but I'm based out of Chesapeake. Okay. Yeah, we just make you come up here. Yeah, I just you, end up being here. You guys work together a lot, yes, though, yes, is that yes, correct? Yes. What, so you guys were telling me earlier that uh, it's important to you to have kind of a nice sort of Rolodex of really smart people that you can go to all the time. Talk a little bit more about that and why that's important to you guys. So some of it's important to us, like as business owners, that we want to know those people, that we can use them, but also, you know, what Campfire does and what I help them with, with branding businesses, they're coming in, a lot of them are new, um, or they're trying to grow, and so they need additional services that we want to be able to say, you know, we know a really great CPA, or we, we know a really great sign maker, or we know, you know, all the things that you guys do. Um, we just wanted to kind of be able to refer more people um, and get to know those people as well, because, you know, when you give a referral to your client, you want to make sure that that's a, a vetted referral. So. Um, we've met people through lots of different venues, but we think this is another great way for everyone to just kind of do the same within their own circles and their own clientele. But yeah, yes. Um, and it's so much easier to hire someone or work with someone when you've met them face to face and realize like, oh wow, we share values, um, you're fun to work with, you're fun to be around. I feel like 50% of the reason we do or don't work with someone is because we're like, oh cool, we like hanging out with them. Right. So we're hoping that you guys today might find other people you like hanging out with and if they could help you out with your business, that's awesome. What I do, I, I have a nice little sort of cadre of freelancers that I always go with. Uh, I have a graphic design thing or a video thing, and a few of them are here, and two of them didn't know they were going to be here, and they uh, emailed together about 9,000 times, and I was like, oh, you guys should know each other now, and so that was just kind of a fun little thing that we figured out. Uh, so uh, tell folks that don't already know, uh, without giving us the hard timeshare sell, uh, tell us about your businesses and uh, what you guys do, and you said you're about five or six years into it. Talk a little bit about your growth in the last five or six years, if you could. Sure, yeah. So my business is Campfire & Co., which I founded with Lauren, who's back over here. 
<laughs> Smart lady. We just, we just didn't have enough chairs up here. That's the only reason Lauren's uh-huh. not up here right now. You're welcome um, to take mine if you'd yeah, like. But Camp Fire Co. is a branding company, so we think that that is everything from graphic design to uh, web design and then also interior design. So we also do spaces. So we really think it's that whole experience um, that you know, makes a brand. So that's what Camp Fire & Co. does. And then as we are getting into websites, that was when we really needed a writer. Writing is not really one of my skills. So we pulled in Rachel. Um, So the Content Shop Shop is a professional writing company. Uh, We do mostly digital content. So that's website copy, blogging, some social media as well as some print pieces as well. Um, and, and as far as like, how our companies have grown, we started around the same time, so like five or six years ago. Um, but it's just been interesting to see our two paths and what growth looks like for two different companies. So Campfire has grown from Christine and Lauren working in her dining room to you know, five people in a building that they are you know, basically renting managing. and managing yeah. themselves. Um, I started out with just me, and it's still just me. But there's still growth. Like I've still had a lot of growth in my business in terms of the kind of clients I take on or the kind of efficiency I can work with. So we wanted to show you, you know, I think a little bit in this conference what growth can look like and that it does not necessarily mean um, building this gigantic empire. It can look different for every business. So. That being said, we definitely want to build empires. <laughs> it just Having might not require that, a thousand people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's one thing you guys wish you knew so you're five, six years in, you said, uh, I'm sure you've learned a hell of a lot. Uh, what's one thing you wish you knew when you first started out that you know now? For, for people that are just starting out their own. I, I would say ignorance is bliss, really. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> for sure. No, I mean, I think like just kind of going, getting started before you know all the answers is how you figure things out, so. Yeah. yeah. That's, that said, that's very I'm optimistic. Really, I'm really happy with where we are now, and now I have a lot, a lot harder questions, which really is one of the reasons that we wanted to put on today, is because I feel like there are a lot of really talented, smart people, and I want to go to these workshops and learn things. So there's, so there's nothing you tell your, your, yourself five years ago? Just do it. Just, just do it? Wait, yeah, I have one All right. <laughs> okay, but also... <laughs> But also, it's really good to figure out what you're good at and find other people to help you do the things that either you really, really hate doing or that you're not good at doing. I'm figuring that out right now. So I've, I've, I've been in business a little over two years, and I'm figuring that out right now, that I'm really good at certain things, and I like doing certain things, and there's some things that I do not like to do. And Just so, because you can do it doesn't mean you should do uh-huh, it. Uh-huh. And it's crazy how much you, re- you feel like you can't afford things until you've paid somebody to do it and you realize that it's opened up this huge block of time or mental energy or sure. whatever it is that you realize is way more valuable than spending it on something that you are terrible at yeah. and will take you 10 times as long as somebody else. Yeah. How about you? How about, uh, that is a big one, is, is learning to, to let other people do the things that you're not Um, great at or that you just don't have the time to do the other thing for me and and anybody who's in like a a b2b service industry knows um, tracking from the very beginning like how much time I spend on clients um, exactly how much things cost me um, I wish I had maybe documented that a little bit better in the very beginning and that helps you grow and it helps you see where to be more efficient and then I would say the other thing is don't price yourself too low when you start because then you like have to like nominally go yeah. up from there, even though your value is probably I'm guilty higher. of that. Yeah, everyone please, we get nervous. We don't value ourselves when we think. Like, please love me. Yeah, exactly. Please, please, do please say yes to this proposal. I've raised my prices like four times since I started business. I haven't lost a single client. They don't like they pay for what you're worth. So, yeah. Uh, in our previous conversation, you were saying uh, that a lot of things you want to talk about today, or some of the speakers today in the workshops are about, uh, as you termed it, the grind. Uh, and you said, I remember, I remember writing this down, you said, the grind is not sexy, <laughs> which I have an MTV show that begs to differ. But, <laughs> uh, what do you mean by that? And how do you want to, you said you want to make the grind more fun, which is, I'm just going to leave it there. But uh, 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 how do you, and how, do you uh, how, how do you intend on doing that today? Yeah, so, I mean, it's one of those things where, 
you know, when you go to sort of professional events, um, a lot of times it just feels like you have to sort of put on a particular face. You got to be ready to like do the things that you maybe don't want to do. You haven't quite figured out how to hire someone. Um, but I feel like part of the fun of working in a small company is that you get the ability to constantly learn new things. And we're really passionate about learning new things. I feel like if you work with a small company or you've started one, you're probably also really passionate about that. And so we felt like there was a way to combine learning and you know, things that are learning things that are actually going to help you grow and sustain your business, but also do it in a way that is enjoyable and relaxed. And like, you don't have to feel, you know, worried or nervous if you're by yourself or if you don't have like a pantsuit or something. I'm still like figuring out what to wear to feed more meetings because I'm like, I don't own anything that looks professional enough to go to this meeting. Um, I look great in a pantsuit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know sneakers a lot. But yeah, I mean, some of this stuff, you know, when you're thinking about like writing contracts or, um, you know, figuring out how to email people properly or make your clients, you know, respond to your emails on time, things like that. It's not like that sexy, okay? We're not going to put that on a poster and get like 5,000 people who are super stoked to be here. But what we did want to do is figure out a way to help folks learn the things that I know we all want to know more about and do it in a way that at the end of the day, you'll be like, yeah, that was actually really fun. And I'm super stoked that I know more about a topic that I have to figure out. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, why do you think... Uh, I found this being a growing small business that Richmond's a really great place to be in this position. Everyone's really supportive. Every even if kind of the Venn diagram of, of your business overlaps with someone else's and technically you're kinda of going after the same types of people, I feel like ninety nine times out of a hundred people want to lift you up. Talk about uh, kind of a, about the theory of a, a, a rising tide kind of lifts all boats. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I, I have a few different thoughts on that, but I would say one of our very first things that Lauren and I did was we worked in a space with other businesses who kind of did similar things, and it really brought us, it brought us a client base that we would not have had otherwise, and I think as we've grown, we've figured out more specifically the types of businesses and have kind of honed in on that like ideal client type, um, and so we have kind of differentiated ourselves there, but I don't think it would have worked if we had just said like, hey, you know, here's our stake in the ground, we're opening up a shop. Um, I don't think it would have worked without other people sort of doing a similar thing and kind of generating that interest and like really that, that value for design in Richmond has helped. Mm -hmm. I think when you're a small team or you're by yourself, that collaboration is key because you don't have other people around you out marketing you and selling you. So the more you can collaborate with other business owners, then they're your, your sales team and your marketing for you. Um, and you don't have to do that. So particularly if you're a solopreneur like I am, um, you know, lapping my services over with Campfire brings me more business because they, you know, are giving, right. feeding me their clients, writing me to their mm -hmm. proposals. So just like figure out who you can work with and not against and don't even like, who cares about your competition? Just find people that you can work with um, and that will usually and honestly, I feel like we found as we've grown, the more that we can hone in on who we want and refer other clients who maybe aren't the absolute perfect fit to us to our competition has helped us grow so much in terms of really honing in on this is where we want to go, this is our direction, and anything that falls outside of that is awesome and great work and somebody should do it, and there's all these other people here who are doing great stuff. There's so much work to go around that that we're happy to pass it on to someone else that it's a better fit for. Um, and just to plug Lauren and Christina a little bit, I learned a lot from working with the two of them because as business owners and founders, they're not, they really kind of put out this, this face of we don't really necessarily have to be in the limelight all the time. Like they are happy to collaborate. They're like, oh yeah, let's bring on that other designer. Let's work with that architect. Whereas in some previous jobs of mine, working with other designers, they get very scared about other designers, you know, encroaching on their work or encroaching on their clients and Just get territorial. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's tough. I mean, like working in the design industry can be hard, um, but they've really taught me that there's a lot to the sort of openness of saying, you know, 
whether or not we are the number one person at the top of the list on this project isn't necessarily going to get us very far. Let's just make the work really good and that will go a long way. Do you think there's anything uh, specific about Richmond that makes it particularly easy or fun compared to other places? Or uh, uh, sure, yeah, as a non-Richmonder, yeah. <laughs> as a non Why not? Yeah. Um, it, first of all, this is a small town. Um, when you yes, come from places is. like DC and Hampton Roads, it's just not a small town. I do not sit in a room of people like this and know half the people that come through the door. It's never going to happen. Um, so I think that that is part of it, is that you guys really benefit, really benefit from being small, small businesses in a small town. Um, and then I think it's, it's just a little bit younger, and I don't mean that, like, it's not that older people with businesses are not doing the same thing, but I do think that there's, like, a freshness and, like, an open-mindedness to business here um, that is not necessarily uh, trickled down into some of the other areas. That's what I see as an outside perspective, but I don't know if you want to add to that. I don't. I think that I think that you know, being close to VCU, and we have so many sort of uh -huh. like excited young like students who are in the area that I think keep um, sort of a momentum going, um, and sort of the startup culture has really blossomed here. Um, and I think sort of the city and economic development has realized that that's something that if they push money and you know effort into, that it's going to help all of us grow um, and keep people in Richmond. Um, yeah, there's a lot of beer. People so like much hanging beer. down here. Oh my god. Um, yes. I don't know. It, it's cool being in a city that is small enough to feel like you can make your mark. Whereas if you are in a DC or New York or something, it, it there's a lot more potential opportunity there in terms of a lot more clients. So there's a lot more to do. Sure. But here, you know, you can work on a bar in Carytown, and then you every single person you run into or talk to has been to that bar, loves it, and has told somebody else about it, which is really fun. It's exciting to feel like we can have an impact on the place that we live. It's it's a good place to differentiate yourself. Uh, kind of to your point, I had a conversation with somebody recently about D.C., New York, Atlanta, Charlotte. Uh, bigger cities and how you could be doing precisely the same thing, the same work, and you wouldn't get noticed because there's just a million people doing yeah. similar things. And it's just easier to kind of differentiate yourself in a place like this that has a creative community, that has a supportive uh, small business kind of scene. I think, I think Richmond's not completely unique because there are all sorts of different cities that share a lot of these attributes, but I think you're exactly right that it's, I grew up here. It's, it is a small town. It is a small town. I cannot tell you how many times I've gone to dinner or something and been like, oh, I went to middle school with that guy. Like, it just kind of, um, like, you know that Lauren and my husband went to middle school. No. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> this has nothing to do with anything we're talking about. Now. Has nothing to do with business, really. So, Lauren, um, so I came home from the state, and I was like, I met this guy that I really like. Lauren's like, what's his name? I said, Justin Kern. She's like, ew, that guy from middle school? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's great. There, <laughs> I cannot speculate how often Man, a conversation like that. He's going to see this like on that, the internet, isn't he? No, yeah. How often a conversation like that happens in this town. Ew, that guy from middle school. Uh, I, may, I may very well be that guy from middle school. Uh, well, we only have a couple more minutes. What I want to do right now is, I know we said we didn't want to do too many uh, uh, corporate -y things, but I do want to make sure you're meeting new friends. So if, 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 uh, if we can take two or three minutes, and I think most of you probably are sitting next to people that you don't know, but if you could take two minutes and introduce yourself to three people you have never seen before in your life. Uh, just say who you are, just like real quick, hi, this is my name, this is what I do, uh, these, are, these are the workshops I'm going to. I think that would be uh, beneficial. So let's take five minutes and just you introduce yourself to two or three people that you don't know. 